Hopefully today is going to be a collection pickup day. Oh, sick fish tank too. Pretty much I have at least one coral from every ocean in the world and lots of coral. There's probably 10 different fish in there. I have some shrimp, snails, crabs. This is all the books right here that we're taking a look at, I guess, for the collection, yep. right? Yep, yep. And these are all keys and first appearances. Okay, well, cool. We can go through and look through and then the comic room is where I have the graded ones. I have everything logged into cover price. So I have over 13,000 books logged into cover price. And anything that they have on there as a blue key is what I've pulled out. I really don't go to the key collector for the minor keys because there's probably another thousand or more of those, you know, if we actually went to key collector. You want to get rid of every single box together, right? All of these, yep, yep. So it's 20 long boxes. 22 and you long boxes. 22 long boxes. 22 full long boxes. What's making you want to get rid of everything? Um, just because I have so many. I mean, I have a full wall system that I built in the comic room, which I'll show you guys that I, I have, and I can't even fit any of this in there. I've been collecting since I was 13. These are the only things I've pretty much held on to my whole life. The entire shop was all of his personal collection. If you're talking double to triple of my Oh, yeah. What are you looking to do with these books in here? Um, if there's anything you're interested in, I had them all, you know, kind of individually priced, but I mean, we can work on everything. Yeah, I got those in 2017 for Megacon. They were the Megacon oh, exclusives. That's the Hastings, that's right? Hastings is beautiful, right? That's nice. Nice and signed. Uh, what is this? That's an Italian version of the first appearance of Shocker. Liefeld on yeah, Spider-Man yeah, Deadpool. Nice that's cover, sick. right? These are all to be graded or get done or whatever. I have a stack in there of 100 right now that I'm gonna be sending off to CGC. 30 are personal, Okay. the rest are sale. Once I sell, I can send off another 100. That's keep, exactly keep pretty much what we do. Yeah. do this. You know, I make it pay for itself. Keep and the then in between, rolling. I just, I buy other, like I bought a couple collections over time. So, taking out ones, which nice things. Like at the VLAN show, when I was set up there with you guys, mm -hmm. was across the corner, it's a huge deal to go and do it. And I don't have time, I work full-time jobs. It's hard for yeah, me to get awesome. to do that all the time. You guys have the platforms, you have the mm -hmm. resources, you can get them out to people who really want them. What would you want on this one? Uh, that one's not that pricey. Five bucks, $150 book mm -hmm. raw. Yeah, these things are not cheap. But it's, it's beat up. Yeah, it's funny it's though, even in this condition, people still love oh, it. Oh yeah, absolutely, 0.5 is anything, they go, they go for big money. Have you priced the whole table up? Oh, or no? No, but probably wouldn't let all these go for less than 65. Don't you do them back and forth like that? I do for my personal collection. That Why way. do you do that like that? I was just I'm curious. Because a lot of older collectors do that. For one, when your books sit, they all sit like this. So you're right, bound up, bound up, bound up, bound up. When you do them like this, it won't push a spine roll in it. Look how nice and even this is. Yeah, and when you know what's in here, like, I guess it doesn't see matter. See how this is either all going? Mm -hmm. And I'll twist it, and then they start sliding, and they create spine rolls that mm -hmm. you got to end up pressing out. And, and these just sit nice and true. Yeah, it's hard sometimes selling sets. It, it really is, because yeah. there's some that aren't. Oh, here's some nice yeah. ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's these a bunch nice of those metals Dark Knight's Metal. 40 bucks for the Cosmic Ghost Rider set. Yeah, I'm looking for the first appearance of Cosmic Ghost Rider in a first nice. print. I remember when these first came out, everybody was Dude, looking for all these. crazy trying to get them. First appearance of Vixen. I'm not something you see too often. Solid copy too. It is, it's not bad looking. I'd say eight or so. 50 bucks. Oh, cool. Yeah, those are great. A lot of first appearances. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, those are sick. Gonna get some Wonder Woman for your collection now. Perfect. Even some Perez's in there. Ooh, that's a cool one. First appearance of Humbug. This is his first story, right? Like the first yep. solo Hellboy? Yep. Oh, I need there, this the set. The others are in there somewhere. The whole really? The whole set's in, in here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Werewolf by Night? Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil. Look at that Daredevil. Yeah, I know you'll like those. <laughs> look at that. That's the first nuke. Oh, oh you yeah. got Walking Dead in here, too. Oh, yeah. Well, here, look at these. One, two, three, four, five. You have the Crisis set yeah. here. And there's one number ones, everything. You got the Alex Ross Immortal Hulk yeah. covers in here. Our Germ 705 yeah. variant. Oh, and you got this one yeah. too. This is the, isn't this like a key issue yep. a little bit? Yep, I think it's, uh, she dies in that one. So I put this in so it's not blinding yeah. her whenever we do a laundry. What? But that's how I have full access to the whole thing. I do water changes and it do 24 hours. This right here is fried tank. Like everything I've just broken off of there, thrown into here. Purple lobster down in there. Look at that one, it's completely out of the water when yeah, it goes down for feeding. Oh wow. What got you into this? Um, I've grown up, I was born and raised here. So yeah. I've always grown up in saltwater fishing, mm -hmm. snorkeling. Did you say you're more into the fish or the comics? Oh, the comics has been my entire life. How about that? 
Oh, the Stan Lee sig. <laughs> and I won the drawing on the Sunday of the Stan Lee hand sketch drawing and tattoo by him, which was in Skin and Ink magazine. We hang out for 30, 40 minutes, just talking, talking, talking. The manager finally says, all right, this is what he wants you to do. He wants you to autograph him for a tattoo. And Stan Lee's like, I don't do tattoos. <laughs> He's joking. Pulled up shirt, sat down on the couch. He's got him autographing me right here. My son was trying to sneak pictures, and the manager reached over and grabbed the phone, because, you know, photo ops were like 120 at that time, too. And then continues to snap off about 15 pictures for me. He says, there you go, now you got proof. Run over to Tattoo Alley. On Tattoo Alley, there's an infinity gauntlet sitting on the table across me while I'm laying there and he's tattooing this. And it says, win a hand sketch drawing and tattoo by Stan Lee of the drawing. I put in my raffle tickets. And this is Sunday afternoon, this is happening. So go over there, full video, recorded everything. They draw my raffle ticket. What are the odds? I know, I right know. So I go up. We did it, I'm there, we're beaten. It's all, it was all, a full article was run in Skin and Ink magazine of the whole drawing, the whole winning, the everything on that. One of the last sketch drawings Stan Lee was ever able to do. Wow. Because it was, he did no more convention, he died the next year. I have that in a safety deposit yeah. box. But just walking from there to there, I had offers of ten to $20,000 for that drawing. I've gotten every one of my kids in the comic books. I'm a generation four with my grandkids. From my father to me, to my children, to my grandkids, all going to mega comedy conventions every year. I would love to grab maybe a few of these out of here. Maybe like a and few hundred dollars worth. All those graded too, if you're interested. Some and then, yeah. yeah. Can we take a look at your room? Yeah. This wall is sick. Yeah. Whoa. Like this. This is the... This is the metal of stake number one. There's only five made. And I got it signed by Peach Momoko because she did wow. the cover for it. This one is a 25. This is actually the sketch that she sent in for verification when Peach Momoko did the covers. This is the free promo pamphlet that they actually gave to comic book stores when they were promoting Dawn, Cry for Dawn. You're a big Dawn fan. Yeah, I'm a, bit, I'm a Lensner fan, I should say. Who would you say your favorite character is? Um, of course, this sounds so cliche, but Wolverine. Wolverine? Wolverine, yeah. Okay, and then that's Silver not cliche. Surfer. I feel like Spider-Man is usually the go-to, so. <laughs> but, I mean, I have, you see my row here, I have Wolverine number one, regular series, first appearance of Dokken, first appearance of X-23, Del Auto cover, Peach Momoko cover, Honey Badger. The convention, when her trip actually passed away, this was one of the last signings he did, but it's got a little sketch by Stanley and her trip signed on it. Black Cat, Strange Academy, that. Phoenix, my Wolverine 181. That one's signed by Frank Miller. Those are all signed by Jim Lee. That one's signed by Peach Momoko, the one in 100. First print, second print, third print, fourth print, fifth print. This I had Greg Glam do on the Edge of Spider-Verse, but it's the first print edition that came out. That's a one in 75. That's a Scott Campbell, that's a Annika, the Ghost Spider, Joe Casada. Then my 24 which is a very hard cover to get in 9.8. Scott Campbell. Midtown Comics variant yep. set. Yep. And then of course, Spider Punk in a 9.8. Megacon exclusive, the Silver Foil. That's last year's Silver Foil. That's my original copy I bought off the shelf. There's a Spawn homage. Then this one I actually had done in 2012, I believe, by George Perez on a blank cover. Sent off CBCS, there's the Gold Foil. Signature ones, the one you could only get through retailers because my father had the comic shop. This right here is the second print of this, which is very hard to get. I actually have two of these. One's still raw, but that right there in a 9.6 is about a $2,000 book. First Harry Potter in what? comic books, yeah, in that one. Oh, yep. the Mystic? Yep. That's cool. Tore out the entire closet. That's awesome. Made, built every drawer. Put them all in. All my logos, lots of keys. Manifest in the comics. These are not getting rid of whatsoever. Yeah. These are mine. First appearance of Vulture. Here's my first appearance of Loki, signed by Stan Lee. And Iron Man number two, signed by Stan Lee, which my wife bought me this. For anybody who's oh. watched the movie, I Love You 3000. Mm -hmm. So I have it right there by the Iron Man. These are ones I just got, which these are pretty nice, so I'm gonna be sending off. How often do you send books to CGC? Do you try to Pretty do regularly. Once I sell enough to do like all of this, mm -hmm. These are my personal to send off to CGC. How do you decide what so you're going to send off? Second print. Um, mostly by like or what I'm not keeping. Uh, I do it off value that I know resell, which will get me more to be able to send to CGC. But that's what I'm hearing. Oh, it's I nice. love that. I'm looking for that book, the, the original cover. Oh, I know, Super right? hard to find. It's, it is. And then the Peach Momoko, Edge of Spider-Verse 4. 
first Phoenix. That's a great one. Hulk 182. A couple Spider-Man Indias. First Dr. Afra. The retailer incentive one. That's cool. Predator number one. Nice X23. First Prince of Black Bull in there. A bunch of old Zeldas. Some Wolverines, another Extreme Venom Burst, Momoko. I just like Momoko a lot. David Nakayama, oh, yeah, we which I saw you pick yeah. something up too in your video, yep. A couple of nice Alpha Flights, really good condition. Those are 9-8 candidates. First A-Force, Oh, there one. you go, that's the Cosmic This one, I actually had four of these, and I got 9-8s on all three, and I ended up trading them at Megacon. I bought that 665 of 666. Mm -hmm. I had to go back the next day and find the 666 of 666 <laughs> and they actually had it and i have a raw which i could trade too oh yeah that's really cool is that dynamite that? That was they're at all three that Megacon? was at megacon yeah what the heck? wow Rackeline, vampirella and red sonia triple connecting cover this is what i'm actually getting together to send off here's the black and white when i was telling you about with stanley you're going to send all these books all out at the same time shot, yeah. how do you wow. ship these um very carefully i take great time in packing and my wife is amazing at that too is that a wonder woman barbie down there yes it is yeah, I saw that. from early 80s wow that is cool right old woman got the little barbie. 10 cent wonder woman behind it 129 dollars on ebay and it's oh, really? worth every freaking penny because it presses down evenly yeah nice and flat every single time the stupid clamshells always open up in the end this my facial steamer which i do for moistening the comics mm -hmm. put them on there put a little moisture in them these all my absorbing erasers everything i have my tack iron for getting out spine splits oh wow this is a nice setup i gotta get these right here is a very useful tool it's a great no idea yeah. how nice that works for non-color breaking spine ticks mm -hmm. tell you take a q-tip little distilled water and you rub it right on the thing put a piece of printer paper under the front cover then put your wax paper over the top back and forth for about five ten seconds pull it off it's dry almost gone oh wow i just oh, wow. noticed that's an uncut sheet of the uh those are like a All metal cards the, right metal cards yep from the uh, 90s this is a second print of first spider Gwen. here's some of the, here's the san diego of 688 they only did 10 metal foil covers oh nine jim nine. lee cover oh nine wow nine. that's cool a nine nine yep isn't that didn't have like a recall to it or something or uh, something I have with that it? one down there in a 9.9. What was it recalled for? Uh, because honestly, I'm not allowed to say this, the show is dong. So these are all like your personal books, yes. right? Yeah. These are the ones on the walls. This is a beautiful Rosetta cover. Ooh, that's nice. The Jungle Queen. It's nice that they did it all in different colored inks too. Glad they don't just all blur together. And here's the 9.9 recall wow. version. Wow. Batman Damned. And it's signed. Yep. By Brian awesome. Azzarello. First Silk. And I got all these signed by Humberto Ramos set. Mega Cohen. Here's the second print one too, the rare one. It's actually worth more than the regular first printing. I had the signature series up for a while and then I was like, nah, I'm just gonna put those up. Oh, that's beautiful sick. Beautiful cover, right? Is that Clayton Crane? Yep, beautiful one. Yeah, Black Cat. You're a big Frank Frazetta fan. Oh, very, very much so. Growing up with an artist, I can't help it. Got two of those. Two of them? Yeah, the, yeah, those are the Witch Queens. I don't need one of those. Do you? Yeah, the number four. Here's the number 11. No, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just said you did. We don't have any of these. I think my earliest one. A number five. Oh, that number four was nice. I have another number five. Not last year, but the year before when they had the DC panel for their anniversary mm -hmm. at Megacon, okay? All of the artists, everybody was up on the DC panel talking about all how they're doing the new DC comics and all that stuff. After the thing was over, I was like, I'm gonna get one of those. And I walked up to the front counter and Brian Azzarello was still sitting up there. And I said, hey, can I get one of those? Because they had all these pamphlets that there were their basically points that they talked about as they came up. He gave me one. And then he's like, you want me to sign it? And I said, sure. So he flipped to his page and got it signed. So then me and my wife proceeded. This is the spokes lady and so on mm -hmm. to go around. And we got every person from the panel and the people. That's awesome. To sign it. Wow. And every time I took it up to them, they're like, what are you doing with this? You're not <laughs> supposed to have this. It took us an entire day to get everything signed of tracking people down. Jim Lee, that's, that's really cool. Jim Lee, cool. yep. Neil Adams. These are what they use for each of the artists and so forth. And there's our, that was our checklist. And what do we got in here? A 9 -0. Green label for a pop staple. Oh, geez. Are you kidding me? Oh, really? Because of a pop, a pop staple? staple? It even says it on there. Huh. Where if you see it from the back? Well, it's a, but they gave it a 9-0. Uh, right, right. High grade, but... 
I don't you would think with a top staple, I don't have my glasses. Staple, I right there. Cover detached from top staple. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. That's it. Very distraught over that. Inside front cover is signed and outside's cover signed in gold ink. Oh, I didn't get a green label? I requested a lower grade, so I didn't get a green label. Uh -huh. You can oh, request I didn't it. know you could do that. You can, but they'll give it a lower grade. They'll give it the accurate grade of what the actual book is. You let them put a green label on there, but if you request no green label, they will give you a lower grade and they dock it for the signature on there. Whereas oh. without, yeah, with the green label, they don't dock the signature. They give it the actual grade of the book. I didn't know that. So this one's signed on the inside by Bernie Wrightson and on the front cover signed by Bernie Wrightson. But technically that's higher than a 6.5 then I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. 7.0, um, 9.11 edition, 9.4, hard book to get in high grade. Mm -hmm. 7.0, Swamp Thing. My CGCs I usually keep in here. And then these are all my bag of boards and stuff I keep. But then, you know, you go into these. And they're all my Pokemon. <gasps> oh, oh no way! <laughs> Do you have any Pokemon for sale by any chance? Um, <laughs> I have tons and tons of raws I would give you to get rid of. I will oh, take wow. <laughs> look at them all of that. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna have to come back and go and go through that. Yeah, the Pokemon I'm actually it's a new venture for me. I'm yeah. starting to get into cards. I know cards. I heard you talking venture, about yeah. it before. Yeah, yeah. And more. Here's a third oh one. no way. Now these are pretty nice though. Not, I'm sure you probably don't see many people showing these off. These I've been collecting my whole life. And the main reason is, is we'll go right back to Frank Vizetta. Some of these are extremely hard to find. Frank Vizetta covers at the Earth's core. Wow, I've never seen those before. Yeah. This is what Frank Vizetta did before the, the big books was all of these sci-fi stories. H.G. Wells, H.G. Wells. Did you have to hunt all these down one by one or did yeah. they come out of a collection? No, 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 one by one. He's got his little spot. He does. He hangs out with you while you press all the books and stuff? <laughs> non-stop, non-stop. <laughs> That's awesome. Then you... There's... This is almost complete set of vivid voltage. Oh, no way. Yeah. That's really cool. Yep. Several, several sets in here. And then these are my ones that I need to send to CGC or actually PSA, Charizard, Charmander, Charmeleon. I got the black Charizard, the rainbow Charizard. <laughs> Opened a lot of boxes to get that. Tag team, I mean, a lot of boxes like. 30 trainer, elite trainer boxes. Wow. But this, these are all my Charizards. Wow, that's awesome that you're into Pokemon, dude. Yeah, I, I have love like it. seven or eight of those because those came free with the elite trainer. Seriously, take it. No way. Pokemon? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. snap. Yeah, they came with the elite. I told you, I opened so many elite trainer boxes. Wow. And this was the free promo that came with it. 20th anniversary sealed booster box. Not a big issue whatsoever, but. X-Men 2099, this is the actual comic book, but these are the actual Marvel pages with Stanley scribbling on them, saying what he wanted changed, what to do for colors. So is that original Stan Lee? Yeah, like, right yeah. Now? yeah, writing on it, yep. There it is. That one. That's a nice one. So which book in here is probably your favorite? Um, by Sandman. When I got that back in a 9.8, I cried. I'm gonna be honest, I did. I could not believe that I have that. It oh wow, I just eight. noticed it's a 9.8. Yeah, it's a 9.8. A Sandman number one and a 9.8. That's an expensive book, isn't it? Yes. Wow, you gotta love it that you've held on to them for that long. Yeah. Right? A lot of these. A whole life in here. Literally. <laughs> and each one's got its own story. Absolutely. When that first came out in 2014, right? Yeah, 2014. It's the only book they did not pull for me. Two years later, I finally found a raw copy at the D-Land show, mm -hmm. okay? I bought it for $100, it was a 9.2. Then I got that 9.2, and I got another one, which went to a 9.4, and then I got another one, which went to a 9.6, and then from the 9.6, I moved to the 9.8. 
This one right here has gone from a 9.4 to a 9.8. This one, I have one out there, which is actually signed by Robbie Rodriguez. This I had submitted and got graded, cleaned and pressed. This one I got done, that one I got done. Those, all of these are all my personals that I bought off the shelf, every single one of them. This I bought off the shelf for cover price, the variant. Every, every one of these, this is my original copy. This is, this is my original copy, that's my original copy. That Venom, was, those carnages, all of those are. It's a whole different experience when there was no online and literally having to go to a comic shop. And it's not like it was thing, it was, it was awesome. It was a weekly thing, you know, me and my dad and my brother, we'd go to the comic book store and we'd get our comic books, we'd look at what they had and we'd go home, we'd read them, work and that's it. But you didn't, you couldn't order them. There was no online. The price guides were the yearly price guides. That was the only way to know any kind of value in them. And the only way to know was the previews magazines, which I have one sitting right beside my chair and the newest previews that I look through weekly or monthly when they come out to see what I want that's coming out still to this day. This right here I'm really bummed about because good old CGC, see this corner right here? I took that book out, cracked, pressed, and cleaned. That was a 9-2. Oh, no way, you had it at a 9-2? Put it in a signature bag, mm -hmm. hard case magnet cover, had it signed by Joe Casada, then sent it off and still just to be safe, paid CGC for pressing to make sure I would at least get my 9-2 back and the whole corner's crunched in. Not even about the value, it's like, mm -hmm. that's first Laura Caney. Yeah. That's my X-23, my Wolverines. Is this your copy you bought off the shelf? Yeah, yeah, oh, years and years ago. Yeah. And they damaged yeah. it on yep. you. And this, this one's not, this one's not my original copy. My original copy was an 8-5, but that was my dad's copy that he had graded and then sent off a 9-8 and then as soon as it came into the shop, I bought it from him. Oh, you wanna see something neat? So a friend of mine worked at the movie theater up here. He took it upon himself to get me something. No way. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Is that the film from the yeah. original Iron Man? Yeah, that's Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's the whole, the whole movie. That's gotta be no very idea. collectible, right? That's so cool. Check this out, because he knows how big of a Whoa. fan I am. So during Logan, they splice the reels together, okay? So they have to splice them, it comes in a couple of them, and then they have to splice them together. So when he was splicing, he took these out for me. There's Logan with his claws out, stabbing. And there he is, with his old beard and everything hanging out. Hugh Jackman uh, with Wolverine. Wow, you got cool friends. <laughs> these I have no wall room for. But these are some prints. These are ones I just color. But here's the Frank Miller experience that I got. Signed by Frank Miller. That's the thing that came with it at Megacon. This one's the Jim Lee lithograph that came with the signature. Here's the Stan Lee one sign. You have a lot of Stan Lee stuff. Uh, and here he is autographing me. See, there it is when he drew it. That's the Infinity Gauntlet that they put all the tickets in for the drawing. These right here, I do believe, are the equivalent of the Hulk 1, Fantastic Four, and AF-15 for our generation in the 2000s. All of that, so all the kids now that are seeing them all in 50, 60 years from now, just like those were, these are going to be their grail books to look for. You don't think they're going to be interested in those old Silver Age Fantastic I think Fours? I think they are, but I think all of those are either going to be finally accumulated in people's personal collections that are passing from person to person, which are only going to come up when someone dies and the family sells off the whole collection, or you're just not going to be able to find them because nobody's going to have them anymore. They're all going to be bought up. All of those books, what make those those so valuable back in the time, like Action Comics number one, you got to think, they went through the book burnings. You know, there were cities in New York and Washington that were having mothers bring their kids comic books during the Comics Code Authority to Central Park. And they were doing government run book burnings of comic books to keep them out of kids' hands because of what it was doing to youth during the Comic Code Authority. They went through wars, they went through the paper where everybody sent them back in for bonds. They were had massive print runs. The problem is, is surviving the wars, surviving the bombings, surviving the book burnings, and surviving just period in decent shape. Now we have the books that people are taking care of, 
in a total different generation. So you got to think all that generation, who, who's buying the AF-15s? Big company investors or old men with money? They're the ones who can buy an Action Comics or something like that. They're the ones that are buying those and keeping them for themselves, those big books. They're going to keep them. They're going to keep them. The investors, six months, that same one you just seen with the CGC serial number is going to be back up because they sell percentages and stocks. They literally sell 1% portions of this Action Comics number one that was $3.4 million, okay? So you can, they sell it between 100 people. They hold on to it for six months, sell it, everybody made $10,000. That's, that's what it's been for the past two years. Think about all the kids that are now falling in love with, you know, Hobie Bart, Spider Punk. They don't even, I'm barely even gonna realize Hobie Bart was, you know, the Prowler from the Silver Age. They don't know that, Hobie Brown. You know, they, they don't know that, they just see him as Spider Punk. And that's gonna be their whole era growing up and everything else, and then they're gonna teach their kids, and then their kids are gonna appreciate it, because they're taking them to the movies, and they're gonna know Miles Morales, they're gonna know Spider Gwen as the spider man Look at the Golden Age. How many of these characters were actually in the Golden Age, Green Lantern and all that? There are very select people that go for the Golden Age. No, what do they go for? First appearance in Silver Age. Then they're gonna go for first appearance in Modern. They're gonna go for, you know, Guy Gardner, all of those guys. Then there's whole genres, I'm sure, you, as you've seen, that collect the whole Guy Gardners and up. That's their generation of Green Lanterns. So on, so on, so on, so on. And that's where comics are gonna go. And then I feel like I am beyond happy. I hope you're happy. Yeah, I am. Yes. So we got all of them. I have three of these. He's given us so much of stuff. Awesome deal on all these books, plus all these keys right here. But we got this. Yeah, that's cool. Charizard V. The Vampirella 11 is... Best book in the collection. Here yeah, it is. Yeah, this is amazing. Thank you Frank so Zeta. much. Yeah, and these just thrown in. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So sweet. Thank you. Clay, this has been a great, great day, dude. Yeah. One more time. Read them. People don't read comics anymore. Take the time. I've read every book that you see leaving here, just so you know. Every book. There are, like I said, four long boxes and six short boxes of ones I haven't got you to read yet that before they go in my room, they will be read. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below and let me know what you think of this collection pickup. Did we get a good deal for 1500 bucks? And we'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.